Hey, this is Coach Boydston, and today we're going to be talking about sex, um, plant reproduction, that is. Um, so let's get started. What I have over here on the left is a phylogenic tree of plants. And what we have, if we look at the very bottom, is you'll notice you have what scientists consider the ancestor to plants as green algae. And as, green, as the plants have evolved, you'll notice this first group here, very, very simple organisms. These are non-vascular, and we'll talk about this in a, in a future lesson, but non-vascular means they don't have tissues to transport nutrients like, the, like some of the other plants, we'll say, like the gymnosperms and angiosperms. So things like mosses and liverworts, they stay very low to the ground because they can't transport the nutrients any farther to even get any larger. So uh, that's the first group that evolved, or that scientists would believe evolved. And then the next group, were vascular plants like this fern here. And ferns look something like this. Uh, ferns can get a little bigger. Uh, they do have vascular tissue. Now what's different about ferns than a lot of the trees like our flowering plants and some of our like evergreens that we're gonna talk about here in a minute is they don't reproduce with seed, they actually reproduce with spores um, from just below on the underneath side of the leaf. And so what makes them different is that fact that they just reproduce with spores there. Uh, the next group is going to be the gymnosperms. Now the gymnosperms, these are vascular, all right, meaning they can transport nutrients. Uh, and actually they can get very large. A lot of these, like a pine tree we're going to be talking about today, can get very large. They actually reproduce uh, with what we call a naked seed. What that means by a naked seed, I know we're talking about sex and naked seeds. Uh, naked seed meaning that it doesn't house its seed within a fruit. It's actually exposed. And so we'll look at that. And one example of that would be our pine tree here, which we're going to be using as our example. Uh, the final one that you have here is your angiosperms. Now your angiosperms are going to be your flowering plants, like this lily here. Flowering plants meaning they produce a flower as their reproductive structure. And generally the seeds for these organisms or these plants is going to be found in fruit. So today we're going to be looking at gymnosperms. So let's get going. Gymnosperm reproduction is going to be different than angiosperms, which we'll look at in a later video lecture. Gymnosperms, like this pine tree on the left here, obviously have pine cones, and we've all seen pine cones before. You probably associate a pine cone with this right here. You probably don't associate it with this. A pine tree actually has, and gymnosperms have, two sexual organs, a female and a male. So this structure right here that you normally would call a pine cone is actually the seed cone, and this is the female reproductive structure. So it is going to produce the egg. And then down here we have what we would call the pollen cone, and it is the male reproductive structure, and it's going to produce what we would call sperm or pollen. And so uh, these two structures, although very different, are obviously required in order for us to sexually reproduce a gymnosperm. And so let's go on. Uh, the first thing I want to look at here is pollen cones. And so if you're looking at these pollen cones here on the left, you'll notice I, I give them a title of a sporophyte. I also call it 2N. If you remember from our studies on cells, this is a diploid cell, meaning it has two sets of chromosomes. So it is a diploid cell. So these particular sporophytes are diploid. And if we look at it a little closer, all right, our sporophyte here, this sporophyte will actually go through what we call meiosis. And if you remember meiosis, meiosis produces sex cells that are haploid. So it's going to produce what we actually call a microspore, which is haploid. That microspore is going to become our male gametophyte. All right, big word. Uh, that first part there kind of sounds a lot like gamete. Well, it's on purpose. All right, gametes are sex cells for us. We know sperm is a male sex cell and the egg is the female sex cell in humans and in animals. The gametophyte is the male sex cell within these plants or gymnosperms here. And so for us here and this gymnosperm, that is pollen. So pollen is going to be our male gametophyte. All right, so our next one, if we go over here to the seed cones, this is the female portion of our plant is also a sporophyte. It is also diploid. Uh, each one of these little things, these little sporophytes here, is actually going to go through meiosis, kind of like we've talked about with the other one, to produce what we call a megaspore. This megaspore, it went through meiosis, is haploid. That megaspore is going to eventually move its way into being the female 
g gametophyte, which is the female gamete, which in this case is an egg. And each one of these is basically, there's an ovule, and so what you're looking at here, this is an ovule, and actually this right here is the, the egg. And so this process is really similar how we as humans reproduce. I mean, we require a male structure and a female structure, and they both carry a sex cell, and those two have to meet in order for reproduction to take place. It's no different here. So let's take a look at that. When these two meet, we actually call it pollination. And this thing gives me a headache just looking at it. If you're looking at this picture over here to the left, this is some pine trees pollinating. So those uh, pollen cones are producing that pollen, uh, which is going to be the sperm, and it is just throwing that stuff in the air. And the reason that gymnosperms pollinate so much, and they cause me so many issues with allergies, is because they only pollinate through wind not like flowers that can have a, a bee land on them and help transfer that pollen over to the female part. They have to rely on wind. And so it blows around. I mean, you can see what it looks like on your car. I've gone out to my car and seen this uh, many times in the spring. And so pollen has to travel in the air and then miraculously land on one of the female cones. And so here we have a female cone. Now you'll notice this cone is slightly different, but that sperm has to land, it has to fertilize the egg, and then once that egg is fertilized, as this cone matures, you'll notice they start to separate out. It's a little different than the cone we saw a while ago. And as they start to separate out, eventually those seeds will fall to the ground where they will sprout up into a new tree, hopefully. So that was gymnosperm reproduction. Uh, in the next video lesson, we're gonna be looking at angiosperms and how flowering plants reproduce. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. I'm Coach Boydston, have a good day.